is the big day. My brother is currently dropping me off to the hospital where I'll be doing my ALS course. I've also got my dad hiding somewhere in the back. Oh, but you managed to somehow become invisible. I'm actually really excited about the course. I've managed to read this book and hopefully I've retained much of it. The feedback I've gotten from my peers is that it will teach us most of what's in this book and anything that's crucial and then we'll be assessed along the way rather than sort of wait until the end of the course in order to do a big assessment. I learn from the process of actually doing things and I'm a very visual learner so I'm really excited about learning in person. For the ALS course you can either do the e-ALS which is where they send you a bunch of tutorials to do online and then you go in for one day. I've actually booked into the two-day program which means that I'll have two-day intensive in-person training which I'm really looking forward to. Last night I did an online quiz on the Resuscitation Council's website Website. There are about 40 questions, 140 marks in total. I find questions a great way to test my retention of the content that I've been reading and I also find them fun. Alright guys, I'm almost at the hospital so I'll catch you guys in my break time in 3, 2, 1. Another thing I wanted to quickly touch on is how I've been revising for this book. I initially was making notes on it and it was just taking me forever and obviously working full time was really difficult to study and get through this whole book whilst also being at work and spending some of my time outside of work doing work related activities that actually boost my learning and aid my training. Therefore the last few chapters I've merely read rather than making any notes and I had a discussion with one of my supervisors and it was themed around the topic of being more confident in my ability to retain information that I read rather than having to rely on note making. Throughout med school I was a bit too shook to try to just read and retain that way. Hopefully during this course I'll be able to test the effectiveness of this strategy. Day one is complete, I'll chat to you guys when I'm home because it's freezing cold outside. I am back home from day one of the ALS training. Today was such an intense session. Let me tell you what we did. We had three lectures this morning on the ALS algorithm, causes and prevention of cardiac arrest, as well as acute coronary syndrome, which includes unstable angina and STEMI and STEMI. The faculty also did a live demo putting into context the ALS algorithm. After this, we split off into small groups and attended workshops led by experienced instructors. The first workshop I had was airway management in the acutely deteriorating patient. We we had different airway adjuncts that we were taught how to insert into the airway. This included oropharyngeal airways such as the Goodell, nasopharyngeal airways and an eye gel. Each of us got a scenario when we had to manage the airway for this patient. I found it really fun and useful to have an experienced instructor observing me as I did this because if there's any strengths that I have then I would like to know those but also if there's anything that I can improve then I'd like to hear that too and it was also a good opportunity to ask any questions if we had any. Firstly when there's like a whole big lecture theatre back in my first and second year of university I would ask questions but over time I just kind of stopped asking questions I start to get quite shy now so I like that in smaller groups we had the opportunity to clarify anything or ask questions that have been in our heads that we haven't been able to clarify from for example reading the book or from google search and also at my level i haven't seen as many cardiac arrests or i haven't had to manage a whole airway on my own so this is good practice for me we also briefly touched on how to gain intraosseous access. I've never seen that in practice. I've only done my reading on that. We were asked a few questions and I just, from reading and revising this book, just knew some of the answers off the top of my head. Which for me was good because it means I was getting in that spaced repetition. I remember I told you guys that I stopped making notes from this book. It was quite nice to be reminded that I was actually capable of recalling information from what I had read and not made notes on. We also had a session on CPR and defibrillation, especially if you're working in the acute setting, it's such an important skill to know. One thing that I've taken away is that I need to go back to my hospital and really familiarise myself with the equipment. I'm glad I've done this course early in my F1 year, it means that if I were to witness a cardiac arrest and it's a shockable rhythm, then I'll know how to provide defibrillation for my patient. 
We had lunch after that, the course provided us with food which was really kind of them because it meant I didn't have to worry about where to find food in the short period of time that we had. So providing food for us in our small groups meant that we were able to sort of get to know each other which is really important when you're going to be working with someone in an environment where teamwork is so important. After that we had some more lectures, we went through rhythm recognition. This is a point where I felt that my BSc in cardiovascular sciences really helped. We talked through the heart conduction system, we looked at some ECGs for NSTEMI, STEMI, unstable angina. And we also touched briefly on fluid overload. If your right ventricle fails, for example you've got NSTEMI and leads 2-3 AVF, then you might consider that if you've given too much fluids to this patient who was previously hypertensive, you might have fluid backing up to your liver or the legs presenting as putting edema for example or ascites. That may not be as life-threatening as fluid overloading a patient with left ventricular failure. We have changes in your anterolateral leads, those being V2 to V6 including AVL. To round off the day we had cardiac arrest stimulation teaching sessions which I found so useful. We all took it in turns to do an ABCD approach to a patient who was acutely deteriorating or unwell. In some of the scenarios the patient had already arrested and it was about managing the patient from there onward. My scenario was considered the more difficult one because the patient was alert, they were breathing, so I had to do a whole A to E assessment and then the patient went into arrest and then I had to manage the cardiac arrest from there and then go through the whole post-resuscitation care. Personally, I really enjoyed that because the whole day and all throughout the book as well, we've been going through A to E and I really wanted the chance, especially in front of my peers and in front of people who are so knowledgeable in this area, I wanted to you know go through what I knew and if there was anything that can be commented on and for me to get feedback on then I really wanted that. It was a chance for me to show off what I had learnt, what we'd been taught at med school, what I've been reading in the book, what we've done throughout the day. So yeah I personally really enjoyed that. In terms of my reflections after that, I thought I was going to be really nervous because it was my first time really like being assessed by people as a doctor. Obviously as a first year doctor and just as doctors we're always going to be learning something. But I just felt like my expectations were a little bit more than what would have been if I were doing this as a medical student. In terms of what I thought I did well, I felt that I remained cool headed throughout. When I'm cool, I'm able to think straight and for that reason I was able to you know, recognize the rhythm, realize that it's shockable, then it went to non-shockable rhythm. So it was pulseless electrical activity. I identified that there was no pulse in the patient, the mannequin. What I did well was I followed the algorithm despite changing circumstances. Where I can improve is I can vocalize more what's going through my mind. So this is something that I already know of and I am trying to work on. But when I'm thinking really deeply and um, I'm having like logical thought systems kind of going through my mind, I get kind of cerebral about that and um, I can become better at thinking out loud. This I think is especially important if I'm leading a team, especially in a cardiac arrest. But also if I'm being examined, then of course my examiners will want to kind of figure out what I'm actually thinking. And if I'm not saying too much, then it could it could indicate that I'm actually not thinking what I'm thinking. I'm feeling really good after today because I feel like I've learned so much and put into context things that I had an idea of but hadn't properly practice whilst being observed. For our final year OSCE we had to know how to do A to E assessment, we had to be able to recognise rhythms, do BLS. But today really sort of highlighted how interlinked all of these different algorithms can be and in a real life situation how they might present. So I thought the scenarios were actually very realistic. For example, a patient might present their airway is compromised and whilst you are trying to make them better and carrying out a full assessment and adding treatments along the way, they could go into arrest and how would you proceed with that? 
It's also about teamwork, knowing how to manage a team, how to communicate effectively with your team in order to ensure the best quality of care for the patient and also the team's safety. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. We have something called Breakfast Club at the center that I'm going to be at tomorrow. We'll start at eight, but you can come in a bit early if you wanted to. I don't know how much of an opportunity I'm going to get to like really practice in the simulation setting, especially during COVID. I don't really know what the accessibility to equipment and stuff will be like when I'm back at my trust. So I'm gonna go in extra early. They said you can go in extra early if you want to and just, I don't know, practice. I'm not gonna tire myself out. I'm just gonna, I don't know, we'll, we'll see when I get there. So yeah, in summary, it was a good first day and I'm hoping that tomorrow will be fine as well and I will pass. It's not even 7.30 yet. I've come in extra early so that I can practice some skills, I can help people out should they need that. And yeah, let's go. Guys, the course is done. I'm really tired. I'll see you in five, four, three, two, one. So one time I called my mom and I went ahead to pick up. She doesn't pick up. Hello. October. I passed. I'm an ALS provider now. Woo! Oh, congratulations. Ben passed. Thank you, mommy, papa. I passed on me. <laughs> Congratulations! Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm coming home now. And happy Mother's Day. <laughs> oh no! This is my gift to you. I didn't bring you flowers this year. Guys, can you see my mom's face? Say hello. No, <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Say grab your tea. <laughs> grab your tea and relax. And congratulations. And congratulations. And all right. Again. Okay, cool. I'm going to come home and now. Okay, bye-bye. Alright. Bye. Good afters. Good afters. Good afters. She's the cutest thing ever. It's Mother's Day and I literally haven't bought anything for her. Trying to revise for an assessment, especially something that's quite intensive, something that is actually quite expensive as well that I'm not gonna get the opportunity to keep on doing, has been really difficult, especially as somebody who's dyslexic and I require more time to process things. I'm really glad that today went smoothly and I've passed and it's good news for my mum and I hope my mum won't be too sad that I haven't got her any flowers. I'm thinking of going to the high street in my area and picking up some flowers but I don't think it's like absolutely necessary. My mum's the type of person who's not materialistic and she'll just be happy that I pass and I'm home and I get to spend time with her. I feel that my mum would appreciate cake more than flowers, but we'll see what the shops are saying. Um, the cake shop and the, flo the florist, florist, florist that I usually go to is usually open till like seven. Oh my goodness, it's like six o'clock already. Okay guys, I'm gonna need to hurry up and go and surprise my mum.